Hi, I'm Michelle from Tamachi Paper Blooms, and today I'm going to show you how to make this silver dollar eucalyptus from crepe paper. So eucalyptus is a really popular foliage stem. You'll find it in most wedding bouquets. So it's a kind of trendy foliage of the last few years. It's in almost every flower display that you see. So there's obviously lots of different varieties of eucalyptus and three of the popular ones I do have tutorials for. So we've got the silver dollar, which is the one you probably see a lot of. So we've got the baby blue eucalyptus, which is great for adding height to any kind of display. And also the other one, which I can never pronounce, which I think is the stagiriana or stagiriana. This one anyway, you, you will have seen it in lots of displays. So these three stems together are beautiful. So it's really popular to have a bunch of just these stems, either the three together or individually. So you might have like 10 of one branch, for example. And that works really well, just having multiple stems of this together. Obviously they look great together, the three of them, or they're great as a filler in any of the bouquets really. So they're a really good staple to have and to be able to make. So today we're gonna to do the silver dollar, which is this one. And then coming soon, I will also have tutorials for the other two as well. So hopefully very soon you'll be able to make all three and you're gonna have some great filler stems in your portfolio to be able to use in any kind of display. So there's two approaches you can take to coloring your eucalyptus stems. So I have yet to find a crepe paper that is the standard off the roll color that is the right color for eucalyptus. It's got a very distinct colour to it and I just haven't found a paper that matches that yet. The closest ones are some of the Italian 180 gram paper. However, I'm not really a massive fan of using that paper. So my preference is usually the heavyweight German and there just isn't a colour in that range that matches even closely. <laughs> so I've tried lots of different techniques over the years to get just the right colour of crepe paper for eucalyptus. And I think I finally found it. So I wanna share that with you. However, you might not have the, the time or the materials to do this. So I'm gonna show you two options. So today I'm gonna to show you the full option with all of the coloring techniques that I use and everything that I've learned with time and with lots of practice to get this perfect eucalyptus color. So however, if for any reason you just want to use the standard crepe paper, I'm also gonna do a video that shows doing that as well. Just bear in mind, it will not be realistic because there isn't a crepe paper that is the right color <laughs> that I can find anyway. Maybe you can find one. So if you do find one, let me know in the comments below. So if you're not interested in the coloring techniques that I'm gonna show you, then you can watch that video as well. So that video will be going live a little bit after this one. So if you're watching this video when it first launches, it might not be live yet. But as soon as it is live, I will come back and I will add a link up above and below so that you can go and watch that from now. So to make your eucalyptus stems, you're going to need a template. So I have three individual templates for each of these eucalyptus stems. There is an individual template for each one, but there is also a bundle which gets you all three templates at a discounted price. So the other two stems will also have tutorials, but they'll just come a little bit further down the line than this one. So this, today it's just a silver dollar eucalyptus, but if you do want to save some money on your template, then I suggest you get them bundled now, and then you can get started on the silver dollar and you've got the other two ready to go. So to get hold of the templates, head to my website, which is tarmuchleetpaperblooms.com and go to the template section and then you can download the bundle option there. So I'll put the direct link for that in the description box below so that you can go and get your template. And then let's jump into materials and the things you're gonna to need to make this beautiful paper foliage stem. So obviously, like we just said, you're going to need a template, some white heavyweight crepe paper. So you'll want one 18 gauge wire and between four and six 24 gauge wires. You'll need tacky glue and a little pot and cocktail stick to decant it into some scissors, some pliers, some dark brown floral tape, some kitchen paper towel, a little jar or pot, some isopropyl alcohol and some alcohol inks, a small paintbrush, some white acrylic paint, some dark green pan pastel and a sponge as well. And I also recommend you use a mop paintbrush to dye your paper with. So I'll pop a link in the description box below as to where I recommend you can get all of these materials from. So to get started dyeing your crepe paper, you need to cover your workspace. So actually the best way I've found to do this is with just normal cling film, cling wrap, whatever you want to call it. The kitchen wrap that you use for food, it actually makes a really good waterproof layer for your workspace. So cover that, make sure that the layers overlap. And then next you want to stretch out your crepe paper all the way. For this particular leaf, we want this to be completely stretched. So make sure you stretch that as far as it will go. And then you need to add a few drops of each color of the ink into a jar. So I suggest you start slowly with this. You don't need too much ink to start with and a little does go a long way. It's a lot easier to add more to it than it is to take it away or to dilute it further down the line. So 
Start slowly. <laughs> and then once you've added a few drops of each of the colours, you need to mix those with some isopropyl alcohol. So this is just the stuff that you can get from your local supermarket or grocery store. And just add about half an inch in the bottom of this, mix all together, and then go back and add in more of your inks to get the right colour. So the colours of inks I have here, I'm using a green from the Jacquard range, the Pinata colour, and that is in Rainforest Green. And then I'm also using the Tim Holtz from Ranger range, and I've got Cool Perry and Stonewashed. So you don't need to use these exact colours, but do try and get a similar combination because I've tried a few different combinations and this is what seems to work best. So make sure you mix those up well with your brush. And then I'm now going to show you two different options. So the first one is like the darker option almost, and this is if you don't dilute your inks that much. Now this is quite dark for a eucalyptus, but it is quite good if you want to get some variety. So if you're making a lot of eucalyptus stems, you might not want them all to be exactly the same shade. So this is a good option for that. And then I'll also show you a more diluted version as well. So all you really need to do is just brush on the ink. So be quite generous with your ink and then make sure as you're brushing it on, you're overlapping the last brush strokes. So there's not really any technique to this. It's just paint it all on and then make sure you go back over each of the strokes so that you don't get any distinct lines. You will get a bit of ink that sits on the top of the paper, so make sure you just brush that in as well. And be careful not to overload your paper, because what will happen is the ink will pool underneath the paper, especially because it's sat on top of this plastic, and then the creases and the crinkles in the plastic will actually show through when it dries. So here's one that I made previously, and you'll see that you can actually see the creases. And that's just because there's too much liquid on the paper when it's drying. So make sure you don't put too much on. And if you do find that you're not quite getting the right color the first time, let it dry a little bit before you come back and then put more ink onto it. And then this second option is the paler version, which is actually the one that I recommend you do. And I've achieved this in exactly the same way as the first one. I've just added more of the isopropyl alcohol to it. So I've basically just diluted my ink and this is great for when you want to do large pieces of paper. So if you're making quite a lot of eucalyptus, for example, if you add more of the isopropyl alcohol to your jar, really dilute down your inks and then you can create this effect. So it's nice and it's got that pastel-y shade to it and it's more of the distinct eucalyptus colour. You obviously then can go back and add in more inks if you need to or you can do a few layers if you need to, obviously letting it dry in between time. But this is quite a safe way of doing it if you're worried about the first one being too bold and a little bit too much for the first time you're doing it. So this is quite a good way to get started. So once you've dyed your paper, let it dry completely, possibly overnight as well, depending how warm it is. And then you want to cut out your template. You can either do it by hand or you can do it with a cutting machine. So I have two options available for the template. There's a PDF version, which is to cut by hand or there is an SVG file type, which is the one you need for a cutting machine. When I refer to a cutting machine, I'll generally talk about the Cricut Maker because that's the one I have, but I do believe that the SGV files will work with most cutting machines too. So if you are using the SVG file type, that should be set up to go with a 10 inch tall piece of paper, which is what the German heavyweight crepe paper is. If you are using a different paper type or a different size, then just adjust the template within the Cricut design space to fit your paper. Make sure that whichever option you choose, whether it's by hand or by cutting machine, that you're paying attention to the grain lines on the paper. So there's three little lines within each of my templates, which indicate which direction the grain of the paper should be running. And that's really important for something like this with a leaf because it gets us that V shape that you get with the veins of a leaf. So that actually creates it with the paper itself. So make sure that as you're cutting, you're paying attention to that. Now the other thing to be aware of, because we're using dyed paper, one side of your paper is going to be darker than the other. Now, sometimes that's actually quite useful because to get the most natural looking leaves, you actually want variety in the color. You don't just want one flat color. So I do like to mix it up. So sometimes I'll cut them from one side of the paper and sometimes I'll turn it over and do the other side. And that gets the most variety and it looks great. So I do recommend you try that, but you obviously need to be aware of that as you're cutting out your leaves so that they match side to side because each side of your leaf needs to be virtually the same color, even if the leaf next to it is a different color. So hopefully that makes sense. So you'll see here as I'm cutting them, I'm actually putting them side by side as a pair 
so that just makes my life easier when I come to glue them because I've already matched them. So the easiest way to do that if you're cutting by hand is to fold your paper over so that you know you're cutting side A from the same piece of paper as side B for example. It also makes things a lot quicker to cut from folded paper as well so I do recommend you fold over two, three or four times at the same time and cut those in one go. I also have a few other videos that you might find useful for cutting out your templates. So I have a video with cutting tips, so I'll link that above for you. And then I also did a bit of a fun comparison between the Cricut Maker and cutting by hand, just to kind of see which was the quicker option. So I'll also link that for you in the cards above and also the description box below so you can check that out. And it might actually surprise you which one was quicker, so that's a good one to be aware of. As well as that, I also have a video with a few tips for using your templates as well, which is great for beginners, but you might also find it handy if you've been doing this for a while as well. So whichever option you choose, cut out all of your leaves from the templates. It's easier to just do these all at the start and then they're done. And then the next thing we're going to do is take our wire and we're going to trim that down. So this is the thinner wire, the 24 gauge. And you can do that in either thirds or quarters, depending how much wire you have. I do prefer to do it with thirds just because then you've got a bit more flexibility but if you're short on wire you can do this with a quarter of a wire as well. Also because it is thinner wire you can actually cut it with scissors too. So I like to cut all of my wire first of all and you'll need 25 pieces of wire. And then the next step is to arrange your leaves how you're going to attach them. So I did mention before that sometimes I will turn my leaves over so that I get a lighter or a darker colouring. So just first of all figure out which your pairs are and then decide if you want the light or the dark option from either the front or the back of the paper. And you want to turn your pairs over so that whichever option you decide is going to be the back is facing upwards. So we're going to add the glue onto the back, so we want that facing upwards at this point. And then you just need to add a thin layer of tacky glue, and this is why I like to use a cocktail stick because it's a bit more precise. So you want to add that glue the full height of the leaf, and right on the edge of the paper, as close to the edge as you can get. And then you're just going to stick your wire into that glue, leaving a slight gap at the top so that when you fold the paper over, the wire is not going to stick out. And I like to work in sections as I do this so that the glue has time to be a bit more tacky. So I'm going to do that for all five of my first branch. And then starting again with the first one that I did, I'm going to add another thin layer of glue over the top of the wire. And you don't actually need much glue for this, it's just a tiny little bit because we've already got some on there as well. And then you want to fold over the edge of the leaf to wrap the wire. And the easiest way to do that is to push it in with your thumbnail and that gives you a nice crisp edge. And then we want to add some more glue to the piece that we just folded over. And so you're going to turn your leaf over now so that you're looking at the front of the leaf and align that at the bottom of the leaf. Press the two pieces together, make sure that that's well stuck. You can turn that over and look at both sides and make sure it's stuck. Smooth it all down. And don't worry if they don't quite align at the top, it's more important that they align at the bottom at this stage. And then I'm going to repeat that for all five of these leaves. Your fingers can get a little bit messy at this point, so if they do, just make sure you wash your hands regularly.
So if you do have any pieces that don't quite line up, then you can just go back in with your scissors and trim those now. So with a eucalyptus leaf, there's usually a slight indent at the top of the leaf. So it's almost like a loose M shape. So you can just cut that in with your scissors if you want to, or you can round them off if you prefer. If there are any small bits at the bottom which do still need trimming, you can also trim those at the same time. The process is exactly the same for all of the leaves, so you can just carry on until you've completed all of the ones from the template. Next we're going to add another layer of colouring to our leaves, and I like to do this with pan pastels. So this can get quite messy, so I definitely recommend you protect your workspace somehow. And actually recently I figured out that using kitchen towel or paper towel is a really good way of doing it because it absorbs all of the dust and the excess pastel as well so it makes everything a lot neater and you don't end up with like those marks all over your desk that you normally have so i've started using this paper towel now whenever i use pan pastels and i really recommend you give it a try so the pan pastel color that i'm using is bright yellow green extra dark and it's just the right shade of like dirty dark green that it really neutralizes the bright teal from the alcohol inks and it just adds that extra layer of colouring which makes them look so much more realistic. I have tried quite a few different attempts at eucalyptus to get the colouring right and once I added this extra step it made such a difference and I'm so glad that I figured it out because it really does help to make them look more realistic. So you might think it's not worth it because it's only adding a little extra bit of detail but trust me it is. <laughs> so I definitely recommend that you give it a go. So all I'm doing here is brushing the pan pastel around the very edge of the petals on both sides. So the sponge I have actually has a point on it which makes it perfect for this. So if your sponge doesn't, you can probably still do it without, but if you are able to trim your sponge, then it might be worth cutting it into a triangle shape like this, just so that you can get a bit more precise with where you're putting the pastels. And I'm literally just working my way around the edge, adding only a tiny little bit at a time and then building up the colouring and basically darkening the edges of the leaf, but not the centre. You really don't need much at all. You can see here I'm not adding that much pastel at all. And I'm also adding more on the darker side of the paper than on the lighter side. It shows up a lot more on the lighter side. So you can actually play with the quantity of pastel that you're adding here as well. So I'm gonna do that for all of the leaves now so they're all done in one go. So the next step is to wrap the stems with the floral tape. 
So for eucalyptus we want the stems to be dark brown. So to do this you just need to cut some strips of floral tape, stretch the tape all the way out and then make sure to add a blob of glue at the start when you start wrapping it. You want to start as close to the top of the stem as you can. It's not always easy to get directly underneath the leaf so I usually start maybe about quarter to half an inch from the base of the leaf and then kind of work my way upwards and then back down again. And that way you can get as close as possible without it being too fiddly. So you want to wrap the whole length of the stem. You don't necessarily need to go right down to the very bottom because we are going to cover that up anyway, but make sure you get the vast majority of the stem for this. And then to add another layer of detail, again, this is something that I didn't previously do, but now that I have done it once, I can't not do it because it, again, it makes it look so much more realistic. You may or may not have noticed, but if you look at a real eucalyptus stem, they have this like white line down the center. Sometimes it's quite bold, sometimes it's quite faint, but it's always there. So the easiest way I found to add this is with some acrylic paint. So I'm actually just using really cheap dollar store acrylic paint, it's nothing fancy. You can just use any white acrylic paint that you have. I do recommend you use a paintbrush that has a smaller tip to it, just so that you can be a bit more precise with your application. And also I like to water my paint down slightly just to give me a bit more control. But you don't want to put too much water in, it's only a very tiny amount. So that's why I'm using the jar that I can put the paint and the water in together and mix them rather than just using the paint direct from the tube. And then because we have the wire in the leaf anyway, it gives you the natural place to put the line, so that's quite good. So you want to go about halfway up the leaf from the bottom. If you start at the base of the leaf and work your way up, you'll end up with a thinner point at the top. Whereas if you start in the middle of the leaf and work your way down, your line is gonna be thicker at the top than the bottom. So make sure you start at the bottom and work up. So you also want to overlap the floral tape, so the brown section by about quarter to half an inch or about a centimeter. It doesn't need to be too exact, it's just because in nature that white line does continue, it doesn't stop right on the leaf. Obviously wait until that paint's completely dry before you continue, but it doesn't take long to dry at all, so you shouldn't be waiting long. So for the next step, I like to just arrange my leaves in the order they're going to be on the branches before I get started. So with the template, I've included a little diagram which shows you where each of the leaves should go. So obviously we have three sizes of leaves here and each branch, so we're gonna have three branches, each branch will have different sizes in different positions. <laughs> so in a nutshell, the smallest leaves will go at the top and then they'll get bigger as you work down the stem. But I do recommend you follow the template in terms of placement because I've played with a few different options and that is the one that looks the most realistic. So what we're gonna do is join each of the leaves together to create a branch. So there's three branches, each with five leaves on. So start at the top with the two smallest leaves and you want to bend them so that one's facing to the left and one's facing to the right. So they'll create like a V shape in them. Don't worry too much because we're gonna tweak these afterwards, but that just helps you to place them in the right position. So first you create your V with the first two, then work your way down the stem slightly, maybe a centimeter, maybe half an inch, something around that mark, and then add the next leaf. And again, bend it outwards away from the stem. And you're attaching it to the branch at the point where it bends. And then again, we're gonna move on and do the same thing. So all you're doing is adding more and more leaves to the branch and wrapping it with floral tape at the same time. And as you add each leaf, make sure that you add a bit of glue underneath the floral tape just to give it a bit of extra support. And make sure that as you're wrapping these, you're pulling the tape really tight.
And then when you get to the end of the tape, you can also add a little bit more glue to make sure it's fully stuck. So you can see here how I've placed the leaves. The first two start from the same position and the others are all offset from each other as well. And then we're going to repeat the process exactly the same way for the other two branches. So this is why I said I prefer to use a third of a wire as opposed to a quarter. And that's because at this stage you have a little bit more wire to work with. If you've used the shorter wires, it'll still work just as well, but it just means that this stage can be a bit more fiddly. And then again, I'm just going to continue in exactly the same way for the final branch. You'll probably find as you do this that the leaves twist around and that's totally fine because then at the end of each one you can just adjust them again. And then we're going to join all our branches together. So how this will work is that the centre branch will basically carry on straight up. The one on the left will bend to the left and the one on the right will bend to the right. So start with the centre one and the one on the left and we're going to bend the one on the left and we'll join it at the centre one at the point where it bends. So we're just going to wrap that with floral tape and add some glue onto it and then we'll do exactly the same thing with the one on the right but obviously that's going to bend across to the right instead. And again make sure that you're wrapping it really tightly with the floral tape and add lots of glue as you work.
So then you want to take your 18 gauge wire and overlap that with the base of your branches. So you want to overlap at least an inch, maybe more like an inch and a half, or if possible, two inches. It depends how much room you have to work with, but just a good amount that you can get a good secure fix on there. So you're gonna add some glue and you're gonna wrap it with floral tape and then just keep wrapping the length of the stem. So this particular wire, I've cut mine down to about half of its original height because I know the size of the vase that I want it to go in. If you're not sure what this is going to be used for or what vase it's going to go in, then just leave it full length so you've got the most flexibility in the future. You can always come back and trim it later. But if you do know the size that you want it to be or the height that you want it to be, then now is a good time to trim it with your pliers. And then basically I'm just gonna keep wrapping this with the floral tape and adding glue as I go. So I've wrapped up and down the wire a couple of times to give it some more thickness because it is obviously thicker at the top. Uh, you can also add more thickness to it if you want to with scraps of crepe paper or with extra floral tape. Although the good thing about a foliage branch thickness is it does tend to change quite a bit throughout the length of the stem. And the last thing to do is go in and adjust all of the leaves and branches. So we're just gonna add shape to them basically. So start with each of the main stems and you wanna just pinch those and mold them almost so that they're like a loose S shape. So you can play with them until you get a shape that you're happy with. You want some movement front to back and some side to side. Each of the leaves themselves should curve. Because we're using thin wire, it's quite easy to just push those into shape with your thumb and you just want a loose C shape. You do want them to curve towards you and I find the easiest way to make these look the best is to push down just below the leaf so that that curves in and then the leaf is curving back out again. And you can adjust each of the stems so that some sit in front of each other, some sit more behind and just keep moulding it until you're happy with the shape until it looks more natural. You don't want any straight lines basically. And there you go, there's your finished eucalyptus. So because we've used quite a lot of colouring techniques on this, if I was going to display it anywhere that's going to get direct sunlight, I'd also give it a coat of UV protection as well. So that's just the spray sealant. So the Krylon spray sealant is a really good one to use for that. But if it's going to be out of direct sunlight, then you don't need to worry. So I hope you found that useful and that you've got a beautiful eucalyptus stem. So as I said, there'll be two more eucalyptus stems coming soon. That's the baby blue and the one I can't pronounce, Stageriana, something like that. Um, but anyway, they will be coming soon. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel and or join my email list at howmuchthepaperblooms.com so that you get notified as soon as they go live. So also a little insider tip if you join my email list. The day that I launch a new paper flower template, I also offer five of them for free to the first five people, but only to email list subscribers. So if you're not on the email list, you cannot get them. 
when I send an email with a new template, you've got to be quick because they go very, very fast. <laughs> and there's a code in there that you can use to download it from the website for free. I also offer a discount code for 50% off the template for the first few days that it launches. But again, it's only to my email list subscribers. So I do recommend that you get on that list so you'll get access to future discounts as well. So to do that, you can just go to tarmuchlypaperblooms.com and then there's a little pop-up that will come up asking you to join. So just put your details in there. You can also follow me on Instagram, which is tarmuchly underscore paperblooms. So until next time, happy flower making.